Okay. So now we're going to move on to trauma types. So <clears throat> trauma, we, everybody, every like human being has a trauma response. Um, and all of us can use any four of the trauma responses. However, for those of us who experience complex trauma, we tend to use one as our like primary automatic go-to, um, or have like a combination of two that we use. And so they tend to come with certain characteristics, behavioral characteristics, and like personality traits based on really um, the need to create a feeling of safety for ourselves. And so these trauma responses, our trauma types, are our, our ways of trying to create safety or fe a feeling of safety. Um, and so they can be very healthy and helpful. The problem becomes when we are engaging in these trauma responses all of the time because they're really meant to be, like, help me get through this situation. But when we experience complex trauma, we feel in danger all the time, and so we're really operating out of a place of having to be in survival mode all of the time, and so, or at least most of the time. And so um, when, I, when I read these, or when I explain what the four trauma types are, you might start to go, oh wait, that, is totally something that I do, and I didn't realize I was doing it to create a feeling of safety for myself. Um, and you'll probably see some of yourself in all four, um, but you might strongly relate to one or a combination of two. Um, and again, you could use any four or any of them at any point in time, but they're usually like one or two that we go to as our like our strong typical response. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the fight type. The fight type are people who tend to use fight mode, their fight trauma response, as their primary go-to response in order to create a feeling of safety. People who are fight types tend to use anger to try to keep people either at a distance or keep people close and to control them as a way to create safety for themselves. So like, if, I, um, if I'm a fight type, and I don't want you to be close to me because that makes me scared, then I'll be angry to keep you at a distance. Or if I want you to stay with me and stay near me, then I don't want you to leave, so then I'll make, like, I'll do things that, I'll use my anger to try to keep you to be, stay close to me. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, that's just one part of fight types. There are fight types that don't do that, like try to control and manipulate. But like, um, they use anger as a way. So like, for example, I've been, I've noticed lately that I, I'm a primary freeze type, which I'll get to, but I've been more and more going into fight type because Fight types feel safer to me um, in certain situations where if I'm angry, I feel like I'm protecting myself more. Like if I'm angry, um, then those the people around me are going to pay attention and they're going to listen to me and they're not going to mess with me. Does that make sense? Okay. Primary fight type. Primary flight type. Primary flight type people tend to be the people who are workaholics or people who are constantly doing and going and always busy because being busy and constantly doing and going keep, creates a distance so that they don't have to slow down and experience what it is that they're running from. So these are tend to be people who are perfectionists. Right? If I'm hyper-focused on every little single detail of how I'm doing things, then I'm not paying attention to the other things that are actually like scary to me. Um, if I'm constantly working, then I'm not dealing with the trauma or the chaos that's at home. 
Um, flight types tend to be very anxious. Um, anxiety is one of the like primary symptoms of a person who is primary flight. Okay. Any questions about that? The freeze type. <clears throat> this is me hardcore. <laughs> I am hardcore freeze type. And so freeze types tend to be people who are really depressed because we, what are the symptoms that we associate with depression? What do you, what do you associate with depression? Sadness. Lonely. So what are the behavioral? Sleeping. Sleeping. Yep. You sleep a lot, right? You isolate. You shut down and like veg out and zone out and watch TV and you know for Netflix until it asks you if you're still watching. <laughs> right? Because shutting, if you can't, if life it feels too overwhelming and too scary and you can't, if you don't feel like you can fight and if you don't feel like you can run, then shutting down feels like the next, next best option, right? And for me, my brain automatically, because I grew up in a really chaotic environment, and I was too young to run away. I didn't have anywhere to go, right? And I was too, I was one of five kids. Uh, fighting was not an option. They were all fight types. <laughs> uh, I didn't have that option. I couldn't be the other one. Uh, we couldn't all be fight types. So I, I didn't feel like I had an option. So my brain was like, freezing is my best option. And so I, um, as somebody who experiences a lot of depression, I sleep a lot when I'm stressed. I have to sleep all of the time, um, and I always feel tired. And like I can physically feel when I start, if I've been triggered, um, and I don't feel like I can defend myself or get out of the situation, I can feel the heaviness just like go over my head and like my eyes start to feel really heavy and it's just like I have to shut down, right? So freezing to avoid having to deal with the, the stress or, or the uh, trauma or whatever. Um, people who dissociate are also freeze types. People who dissociate a lot are freeze types. Because, yeah. Um, because dissociating also is a way of shutting down. <laughs> Since we're talking about how you've been kind of transitioning to fight type, uh -huh. not, not by choice, but right. Oh, no, it's been, it's been by choice. Okay, because to me, it seems like that is that might be a step for successfully navigating these yes. stresses, right, for you. For me, yes. In the situations that I've been in, I've been consciously choosing to go into fight mode as a way to protect myself, um, but also as a way to, um, because I've been doing a lot of activism and act, um, advocacy, I've been using my fight mode to stand up for other people. Um, and so that is a, a healthy way to use the trauma response to, to use it in a healthy, um, like, uh, yeah, I mean, just to use it in a healthy way, as long as it's not taking over. So like, if it were where I was reacting and not conscious about it, and I was, um, you know, uh, saying things and doing things that are harmful to other people because I'm in fight response, that would be like where it's taking over and it's not a healthy utilization of it anymore. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, oh, yeah. Would procrastination be part of the freeze type? Certainly, yeah. Procrastination would probably. Um, Either that or, depending on how you're procrastinating, if you're just not doing anything, then yeah, freeze. Um, if you're doing other things, then it's probably flight. <laughs> um, okay, so that's freeze. And then fawn. Who knows what fawn means? Somebody else. I'm going to ask somebody else. <laughs> Gina, you know, haven't talked a lot. What's, yes. What does fawn mean? Probably exactly what it sounds like. If you're fawning to other people instead of worrying about your needs. Okay. Making sure everyone around you is happy instead of yourself. Yes, exactly. Yes. So why would fawn why would fawn be a trauma response? Yeah. 
or Haley? Because if you experience like a lot of trauma growing up, um, like abuse or neglect, then you would fall on your parents to try to make sure they were happy so they wouldn't abuse you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Because it, you feel, a person who is a primary fawn, now I used to be primary fawn. When I was a young child, I was, and actually even well into adolescence and um, my very young adulthood. Uh, fawn, I was definitely primary fawn in response. Um, and because taking care of, if I felt like if I could make my bio mom happy, maybe she wouldn't go out and use drugs and come back and be really angry and scream, right? Or if I made sure that my siblings were happy, then maybe they wouldn't beat me up, right? Like these, um, the fawn response is, I feel safest if those around me are happy and those around me have their needs met and those around me like me. So my emotional needs and my physical needs aren't that important. As long as those around me are happy, then I'm not getting hurt anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. That one usually hits home for people, right? Especially people with complex trauma. Especially women. Not always women, but it's a common one with women because we're socialized to just shut up and do what we're told and uh, and don't make any, don't cause any problems, right? That's why we see a lot of men who are fight type and women who are fought type. And people who are fight type tend to be drawn to people who are fawn, and people who are fawn tend to be drawn to people who are fight. Not typically. <laughs> Not typically, right? Because a fond person, it's and, and you see this dynamic, especially in like abusive relationships, um, whether it's physically abusive or uh, psychologically abusive or like any kind of really abuse dynamic. Um, the fight types use control, and fond people don't know how to stand up. It doesn't. They don't. They don't feel like they have the capacity to stand up for themselves. So their goal is to make this other person happy. And fight types like that because that feels safe to them because they feel like they're in control. And fawn types like that somebody's going to let them fawn to them because that just feels safest to them if they are able to be with somebody who can, uh, who will, uh, re will let them essentially be codependent. Uh, now, it's only an issue if it's something that's like unconscious and taking over. Um, being a fight type doesn't like mean that you're a horrible, awful person. As long as you're working through your own stuff and not letting it cause harm to other people. Fight types tend to cause harm to themselves, right? Fight types can cause harm to other people, but fight types usually cause harm to themselves because they're constantly in putting themselves in situations, not consciously, but putting themselves into situations that because they want to feel safe, they're, they're in these situations um, that tend to not be safe. But if we'd also like to point out one thing in that in the workplace, fawn types actually enable really egregious, uh, inappropriate behavior <coughs> in the workplace. Because if there's one person who is abusive in a workplace, and the supervisor is a fawn type, sometimes they will fawn to that abuser rather than holding them accountable. Yes. And that allows everybody else to kind of suffer. And it can really damage a workplace environment and make it very traumatizing. So if you are in that situation, let's say that you have one person on your team who's always problematic or difficult, and your supervisor, you can pull them aside, you send them emails, you beg them to intervene, you beg them to just hold that person accountable to whatever the standards are. They're like, oh sure, no problem. And then they get in there and they repetitively throw you kind of under the bus. Oh, well, we'll just do this. That's, that's a fond response in management. 
that's a problem in organizations too. Those of you who are in charge of, or, of organizations, you will watch your font types always be the ones trying to get you not to hold people accountable because they're afraid of the blowback. And what we can do for something like that is assure them, listen, the person in charge needs to take care of this and we're all gonna be safe during this, but we need to make sure that this doesn't disrupt the team. That'll be the person that holds your team back from making progress if you let them. Thank you. I also wanna add that if you are a person whose primary thought, if you feel like you're identifying with this right now, I would wager to bet that there are also times where you feel like you know that you want to do something, but you are terrified to do it. Uh, like you know you want to stand up for yourself, or you know that like what that abusive person is doing is wrong, uh, but you don't know how to do it, or how to stand up, or you're too afraid to stand up for yourself. That's a really common experience. Um, but also, if you are a font type, you may not recognize that you're doing this. And so like, if you're like questioning, um, well, you know, why is this person always complaining about this other person? And they, they seem like a great person to me. They're always so nice to me. Um, that is like a pretty good sign that you're probably fawning. If somebody else is saying that the, this person has uh, behaviors that are harmful and you're not seeing it, it's, it very well could be that you might want to look and see if you're fawning because it's hard for you to see those behaviors in other people because allowing yourself to see them and confront them is scary. And so it's easier just to like pretend, like not pay attention to the details of like, or the warning signs that that's happening. Does that make sense? Okay, so now the fun part. Um, the worksheet that I handed out. <clears throat> What you're gonna do is you're gonna go through, there are all four of these on here. So this is front and back, two pages. Um, if, for each section, I want you to go through each one. If you, if you feel like you have this characteristic some of the time, put one um, check mark. If you feel like you have the characteristic often, put two check marks. And if you feel like you have the characteristic most of the time, Put three. So then you're going to do for all four types, one, two, or three, or not, not at all if you don't ever do it, but one, two, or three check marks and then tally them up at the bottom of each section. Any questions on that? Yeah, Tina. I don't have questions, but I have a comment. Uh -huh. And I don't really know that it even needs said, but probably if I wasn't informed because of you. Mm -hmm. I would wonder as a parent, so I just wanted to say, I know we're not telling personal experiences, and this isn't really a personal experience, but I would also like to say that this dynamic, and correct me if I'm wrong, this can be between a child and a parent. Yes. So I felt stuck a long time because today I'm seeing that I'm the fawn type, uh -huh. and my child is fight. So it could still be a dynamic Definitely. It could be a dynamic. It's not, you know, I know a lot of people probably think that it's like an abuser and, and somebody who's abused or mm -hmm. whatever, but this can also be between a child and a parent. Right. And just because somebody's a fight type doesn't mean they're abusive. Right. But their actions can. can me a lot to know yeah. that this isn't her just beating me. Yeah. I know she doesn't. Right. So, it's, I mean, right. Sure. Her, her fight reaction is out of a need to create safety for herself, which means that she's feeling unsafe. So, but I know a long time, you know, I wouldn't have thought trauma or any of this would have been between an actual child and their parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
once you've finished, we're not actually going to talk. Um, we'll do like a quick, when you come back, we'll do a quick like uh, answering any questions you have about this. But we're not actually going to talk about what types you are. So this is just really an opportunity for you to reflect on yourself. Um, so once you've finished that, you can go ahead and take a break.